Abraham Maslow has this great quote that instead of trying to change roses into lilies, what we do is we try to make a rose into a good rose. That's very practical. If we can really focus on our own growth and development and try to become the best us, that's the self-actualization journey. As a leader, inspiring self-actualization from others is super important and I think is often overlooked. And so, what does a self-actualizing workplace look like? This is Stand Together Presents. Stories, ideas, and advice from changemakers tackling our biggest challenges. This is Scott. This is the moment. All and he is clearly not trying to be anything other than the most authentic version of himself. I actually messed up the words, but whatever. <laughs> Besides his unique talent for singing and dancing in public, Scott is a serious scientist, looking at how humans can maximize their potential in order to live more fulfilling lives. And that includes in the workplace. When we talk about what does a self-actualizing workplace look like, it's usually one where all the employees are inspired to work toward and contribute to that larger goal. They feel like the job that they're doing is a part of who they are in some way. Like, I am a writer, not just I'm writing this report. It's the difference between a job, a career, and a calling. When you just have a job, you're really just checking in and out as fast as humanly possible. When you have a career, maybe you like what you're doing and you don't think about it after hours. But when you have a calling, sometimes people describe being called into the future and you are much more likely to be motivated by what you're doing, to have higher levels of life satisfaction, because it's something that is really beyond yourself. Scott argues that when your team harnesses their unique talents, they're also contributing their best towards the bottom line of your organization. So how can you create these conditions in your workplace? A good leader is one that is very good at spotting the unique strengths of their employees and allowing them to figure out aspects of their day in which they can use their unique character strengths and bring that into the work they're already doing so that they do feel like their unique talents and gifts are contributing to that larger pie in the workplace. But also, you can send that message through your cultural messaging and even at the hiring stage so these workers know that they have been accepted to work at the company because of their uniqueness not just because of their good standardized test performance. That's a very different sort of messaging. And so really make sure that the goals that your employees are taking on are really the right goals for them so that they don't lose sight of how all these other things they're doing are all harmoniously feeding into a larger purpose.